All right, today we're gonna do our wiring. Got Chris here to help me do my wiring. And uh, this is we're, your, uh... we're gonna get it figured out. So we purchased this conversion harness from Hotsport a while back. I've seen the K-Swap conversion harness online for much cheaper if you wanna shop around. This conversion harness is what we have to work with. And so this video will be based off this particular conversion harness. What we are doing here is we are plugging things up to figure out how we are going to route these cables for this conversion harness. Pretty straightforward, just plugs into the existing yep. uh, chassis or factory harness. Yep, factory harness. It's K24 harness. <clears throat> actually, no, it's a K20 harness. That's actually the harness you hooked me up with. Oh yeah? Yeah. I cleaned it up. Um, there's maybe some exposed wires, but I, I'll, I'll end up fixing those. Do you need the brain to yeah. plug it in? The brain is in right here. Perfect. And then those, those two, the wires that are hanging, yeah, those are the K series. That's why I was telling you it's really short. You don't get that much. Oh yeah, because it's it, it's gonna sit Stay like that. Right yeah, there, which is great. Yeah, um, I think I'm gonna have Tom customize me a bracket so it can hold the brain in there. Oh yeah, because he says a lot of people just leave it hanging. Yeah, and I think it'd be good too uh, to have this exposed out so when you're tuning the car, so it's just a quick. Plug. Oh, got it. Okay, the USB tap. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So. The, these two harnesses are from the um, K20 harness. Yep. And you can't mess it up. So these two, one gray, one white. The gray goes into this one. Okay. And the white goes into this one. Okay. And then the, from the conversion harness, this one goes into this side. Got it. Okay. Cool. So we'll, we'll go ahead and plug those in. This last one goes to the very end. Cool. So you have those plugged in right there. Okay. Okay. So these two plugs. So there should and... be a 10 pin connector. No, that one right there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 pin. And then a, there's a starter two wire. Pin. Yep. The two pin will go over. Okay. To feed it right through okay. onto the driver's side towards the shock tower. Right there you go. So, what I discovered upon reviewing this video, there is a hole um, close to the center of the firewall. We could have routed it through that hole, but I wanted any wires away from the headers, even though I can route it higher away from the headers, but I wanted a much cleaner look. And so, um, we just kept the wires inside the vehicle. So from the two wires, or the two plugs that we moved from the passenger side over to the driver's side, they're gonna connect into these, which is okay. inside the cab, uh, engine bay. Um, some people actually feed this through here. We're just gonna feed it up into this and plug okay. just like OEM would be. Okay. There you go. Okay, got it. Okay, so the two plugs, we're gonna set it through. So once you feed those through, they should just directly plug in. So, try with it.
Yeah, I think that's the temperature temperature switch and the fire. This is the temperature or switch. Or fan. Um, so this should either go. So it might have to go through that same hole, but I don't know if it's going to be long enough to reach the radiator. Yeah. They didn't. I don't think they made it long enough, but we'll see. Again, I did notice the hole close to the center of the firewall, and we could have routed it that way, but it was still going to be short. We had to extend these wires for the fan switch and the ETC sensor plugs. I think the instruction does say the wires would have to be lengthened, but I'm pretty sure it was made to the length if you're using the uh, Hosport or another brand coolant adapter for both the fan switch and the ETC sensor. But the, in this situation, I wanted to use a OEM RSX radiator that came with the fan switch connected. Okay, so now with the four wires, I had to cut and extend. So what I'm doing here is I'm gonna route these cables underneath this wire loom to go straight out. So what we're gonna do, we gotta route those wires up through where the um, factory, actually the K series wiring harness went through. So we're gonna use this hanger and I'm gonna feed it through and he's gonna fish it through that way. Keep it real tight on there. And then let's start fishing it. Okay. Hanger tape method. Not far. Because you said it's got to plug in. Is it? Is it plugging into here? With the fan switch plug, we ended up lengthening the wire so it would plug into the RSX radiator. So with the ETC sensor wire, I had to extend this wire. And this wire is the yellow with green stripe color. And I also extended the ground wire and I grounded it off with the other grounds on the valve cover. Again, as I mentioned, I could have routed the O2 sensor plug wire through the middle of the firewall, but I wanted a much cleaner look, and I wanted to keep all the cabling together. So I modified the conversion harness by running the O2 sensor cables along with the ETC and the fan switch cables through the right side of the firewall with the rest of the engine harness. So what I did was I went ahead and um, took off uh, the insulation and I ran the wires along this so that way you'll get more room to plug that in there and of course we had to extend four wires got to extend another four wires um, so that way it just it's just gonna be a cleaner well I'm gonna try to make it as clean as possible as I can um, so here are the four wires I'm extending and I'm gonna route it underneath here to the O2 sensor that connects in this header okay I'm underneath the car so I routed it from underneath all right this is what it looks like Okay, so what we're doing here is now we are taking the blue, uh, the white and blue stripe wire that needs to be pinned into this light gray uh, RSX harness. In location number eight. In location number eight. So it's a male pin that they provide for you. So if you look at the diagram, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
So if we go right here, just make sure you put it in the right way. Oh. And then before you put it in though as well, you you want to unlock the, the pins. There's some sections where you just pop it in. Pop it. Make sure it, it unlocks all the way to so he's saying there's some tabs that you unlock and you lift it up. Now you can just put it in. And then we are connecting it to the light gray RSX plug. Here's an RSX plug. So how they do is they count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's this empty slot. Um, and with RSX, you count across. Oh, there it goes. Like okay. that? Okay. Yeah. Put the connect single white wire with the blue stripe to the same color wire at the BEC plug. This is the BEC plug. Okay. Okay, so on the RSX harness, you have the white plug, and this is plug B, and they said to uh, connect to pin 10, which is the same color wire. So you're going to count across one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And it's going to be this white, white with blue stripe. Third one from the middle over. So now it says to take this wire, the white and blue, that you connected into pin A, and locate the B wire. And try to locate the same color, which is the white and blue that you see right here. And you can use these tabs to put it. In. Need a needle nose to crimp that down. Okay. Camera. And that wires for the alternator charge lamp. Okay, on the factory Integra, um, for this one it's a 95, so it's an OBD1. So what you gotta do is look on line to see which one is A, um, B, and D. So when I looked online, A is the bigger plug, B is the smallest plug, and then the medium plug is D. Okay, on the D plug, it says we need to do the red-green to D10, which is you got to count from one on top, two on the bottom, so it goes one, two, so it goes one, two, three, four, so it goes from top down, one, two, so I'm going to count all the way to ten, and uh, the red green goes to the number ten, which is Also this red, also this red green. The next one is the white black wire goes to D2, um, which is this black and white wire, D2. So you go one, two. So this color is green, white. And then the next three color wires, um, is the A15 which is red so I'm gonna take this red cable and when I count to 15 it's gonna be this pink wire 
pink wire with blue stripe with the silver dot. And then what I'm gonna use is this pair of needle nose and I'm gonna crimp this metal down. And the reason why I'm doing that is to make sure that this actually bites into the wire because you want it to to bite into the wire to uh, go through the shield and that way it can make a connection so that would be my tip for these um, they call it a scotch lock connector okay the next one is the green yellow to the a7 so here on my a connector plug I'm gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, which is this green, green, blue stripe, silver dot. And again, I'm gonna use the um, needle nose or prior pliers to crimp down on these connectors so that way you can get a good connection okay the next one is the green orange to a13 so I know this is seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen which is the orange green to orange green in this wire is also green orange stripe the last plug is a three pin plug from the conversion harness on the passenger side we want to locate a green cover we're going to locate the three pin plug and pull it out from the green cover I believe this is the scanner plug and we will plug it into the conversion harness and that will be that Here is a OBD scanner plug that is on the conversion harness. Go ahead and mount this in a spot where you can access the OBD, OBD plug for a scanner to use. If you like what you saw or this was somewhat helpful, please hit the like and subscribe button and please share. Thank you.